Exodus chapter 3, a very familiar portion of Scripture. There's something I want to glean a thought from this morning. Exodus chapter 3, we'll begin reading verse number 1. The Bible says, Now Moses kept the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian. And he led the flock to the backside of the desert and came to the mountain of God, even to Horeb. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a flame of fire out of the midst of a bush. And he looked, and behold, the bush burned with fire, and the bush was not consumed. And Moses said, I will now turn aside and see this great sight, why the bush is not burnt. And when the Lord saw that he turned aside to see, God called unto him out of the midst of the bush, and said, Moses, Moses. And he said, Here am I. And he said, Draw not nigh hither, put off thy shoes from off thy feet, for the place whereon thou standest is holy ground. Let's pray. Father, we bless you. We thank you, Lord, that you're in the midst. We're thankful for this grand privilege to be able to come and worship you in spirit and in truth. Now, Father, we sure do bless you for your holiness for your greatness, for your grace, your mercy, and your excellent goodness. Now, Father, who are we that we'd have the privilege to come to your house and worship you this morning? But, Lord, we certainly do want to worship you this morning. You have been so great to us and so kind to us. And, God, we're without excuse. And on this weekend, Father, when we... Remember those that gave their lives for our freedom. Help us not to give any less thought to the fact that you sent your son to bleed and die, that we could have true freedom. We could be saved from our sins. Now, Lord, thank you for good jail services this morning. Thank you for a good Sunday school hour. Thank you for the privilege, again, set before us for the worship hour. We appreciate the good choir singing, the congregational singing, the special singing. We thank you, Lord, for being so kind to us. Now, Father, I pray for the next few minutes you'd put a hedge about us. I pray you'd bind the powers of hell. I pray that the forces of evil would be driven far from this place. I pray for the presence of a holy God. I pray that, Lord, uh, we'd have uh, Holy Ghost conviction fall on this place. I pray, Lord, that we'd have Holy Ghost confirmation fall on this place. I pray, Father, that we'd have uh, Holy Ghost uh, uh, mess up our plans fall on this place. Uh, Father, I pray that you would permeate us and, Lord, your presence would be so real you could not be denied. Uh, I do pray for the children of God, that, God, you would bless them, you'd revive them, you'd refresh them, you'd do something for them this morning. I pray this morning for those that may be in our midst uh, who have never trusted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. I pray for conviction to fall on their soul. They'd realize their lost condition and they'd give their heart and life to the Lord Jesus Christ. Get born again. What a blessing that would be. Now, Father, use this unworthy vessel. Help us from the Word of God. Uh, Paul said, preach the Word. And God, I praise the Word of God is preached. Uh, I pray that, Lord, uh, you know, folks would draw nigh to Jesus uh, and you draw nigh to them. Uh, I pray that, Father, uh, 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 faith would be increased in our hearts uh, and fears would be dismayed. Uh, Father, I pray that you'd be glorified and honored and magnified. Uh, I pray uh, that, Father, we'd once again fall in love with you. Uh, I pray that, Lord, uh, the sweetness of the honeycomb would not compare uh, to the sweetness in our soul uh, for what you do for us. Uh, Now, Father, bless. uh, Have your will and way. Uh, We'll fail not to bless you and praise you for it. Uh, For it's in the wonderful and holy name of the Lord Jesus we do pray. Amen. 
Amen. Uh, I want to draw your attention as a way of introduction to a couple things out of this text. Uh, I want you to notice uh, that Moses is called uh, in verse number 4. Uh, the Bible says, and when, he, and when the Lord saw that he turned aside to see, uh, God called to him uh, out of the midst. Uh, uh, can I say that uh, God had orchestrated this event? Uh, Moses uh, is on the backside of the desert. Uh, uh, can I say, uh, you can't get too far away from God. Uh, you may think uh, you're in a place where nobody knows uh, or nobody cares, uh, but I'm glad there's a God in heaven uh, who's everywhere uh, all the time. Uh, he's an omnipresent, uh, omniscient God. Uh, he knows what you're going through. And God orchestrated this event. Uh, 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 God set a bush on fire uh, that would not be consumed. Uh, uh, can I say, I don't know, uh, Brother Donald, how long that bush had been on fire. Uh, I don't know what Moses was uh, doing, Colonel. Uh, he might have been uh, attending after the sheep and not paying much attention. Uh, but God had set a bush on fire. Uh, and hey, when Moses saw the bush, uh, he turned aside from where what he was doing uh, and turned uh, toward the bush. Uh, uh, can I say, uh, God set something on fire some 2,000 years ago. Uh, hey, uh, he came and he bled and died uh, on a cross uh, and he uh, was buried and rose again according to the scriptures. Uh, hey, uh, can I say, uh, some 40 days later, uh, on the day of Pentecost, uh, he anointed and empowered uh, uh, Peter to preach a message uh, and 3,000 souls were added to the church that day. Uh, can I say, uh, uh, the church has been burning ever since. Uh, uh, she's been sitting uh, on the backside of your desert, uh, and you've just been going through life uh, not knowing God's got something for you. Uh, and if you'll turn to Jesus, uh, he'll change your life like he's about ready to do for Moses. We find Moses turned aside, and then God called him. Let me just say this. God didn't call him till he turned. Turning is a picture of repentance. He turned from the direction he was headed and turned to the Lord. And when he turned, then God had something to say to him. Hmm? We see he's called in verse number 4. Notice he's commanded in verse number 5. The Bible says... And he said, The Lord, draw not nigh hither. Put off thy shoes from off thy feet, uh, for the place whereon thou standest is holy ground. Right. Now the, Moses has turned to the Lord, uh, and the Lord has called him, but he's about to command him. He said, Now that's far enough. He said, You can't come any farther till you get rid of some things that's in your life. Oh. Boy, it got real quiet right there. Can I say this? Some of you haven't got any farther for, with God because there's some things in your life he's not pleased with. Amen. He told Moses not to come any closer, not to come hither. He said uh, to remove his shoes from the place where he stands on his holy ground. Some of you have never been to holy ground because you won't get rid of those things that God's put his finger on in your life. Mm -mm. See, God commanded him. Can I say God commands us from his word? Can I say every Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night, uh, uh, God has his man to stand up, preach the word, and God has been speaking to your heart, and there's some things you won't turn loose of. Well, don't expect God to do anything for you. Mm -mm. Obedience brings blessing. Disobedience brings judgment. God commanded him. If Moses would have kept his shoes on, he'd have went no farther. Matter of fact, we'd have never heard from Moses anymore. We'd have never known the story of Moses uh, had he disobeyed God and said, Nope, I'm keeping my shoes on. This is nasty dirt. God said it was holy ground. Isn't it amazing what is nasty to this world when God steps on it? It's holy. We see he's called. We see he's commanded. Notice he's commissioned in verse number 10. I'm hurrying. I've got to get to a thought. 
In verse 10, the Bible says, Come now therefore, and I will send thee unto Pharaoh, that thou mayest bring forth my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. So God calls him, he commands him, and then he commissions him. He says, here's what I want you to do. I want you to go speak to Pharaoh. And he said, uh, I want you to deliver my people out of Egypt. Now, one of the worst things that God could have said to Moses was, I want you to go to Egypt. See, Moses has been hanging out for some 40 years in this desert because of something that happened back there in Egypt. The last thing he wants to face is Egypt. Hmm. Uh, and can I say, sometimes we don't want to face what God wants us to face. But you'll never have true victory until you let God take care of those things that you don't want to face. We find he's commissioned. He says, I want you to go lead my people. Notice, if you will, Moses' concern. Look at verse number 11. And Moses said unto God, Who am I? that I should go unto Pharaoh, and that I should bring forth the children of Israel out of Egypt. Notice Moses asks a question. He questions, who am I? Hmm. Now, on a sidebar, Moses' mama put him in a bulrush and floated him down the river, the Nile, uh, and one of the daughters of Pharaoh uh, raised Moses as her own child uh, in the house of Pharaoh. Uh, uh, Moses was in line to maybe be one of the next Pharaohs uh, until he chose to suffer the afflictions of God's people uh, rather than uh, uh, enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season in the house of Pharaoh. Uh, Moses knew he was a Jew. Moses chose to be a Jew and when Moses did and he saw the Jews persecuting he raised his hand against an Egyptian killed an Egyptian and then he left Egypt and he's out there on the back side of the desert for 40 years but he knew the language he knew everything about Egypt he knew what it took to stand before Pharaoh God had been preparing Moses from his birth to go and deliver for his people. Uh, can I say God will never put more on you than he's already equipped you for. Uh, God uh, I knew the end from the beginning and the beginning from the end. Uh, God knows what you're able to do, what you're not able to do and God is in control of this thing. Uh, God knew all that but Moses didn't. So Moses says who am I? In essence he tells God who am I? to serve God he said I'm a murderer I'm just a sheep herder back here in the middle of the desert somewhere who am I to serve God can I say every man of God worth his salt has asked the same question not only says who am I to serve God he's questioning God he said who am I to stand before Pharaoh who am I he's the right one that's who he is and can I say, he's saying, who am I to superintend your people and lead your people? He's questioning God. And he's concerned. But then notice he's comforted in verse number 12. The Bible says, and he said, the Lord said, Certainly I will be with thee, and this shall be a token unto thee that I have sent thee, when thou hast brought forth the people out of Egypt, Ye shall serve God upon this mountain. We find he's comforted. He's comforted because God said, I'll be with you. Can I say there's no comfort like the comfort of knowing God's with you. God gives you a peace that passeth all understanding. Then notice he's confirmed in verse number 14. Mm, verse number 13 Moses said unto God behold when I'm come to the children of Israel and shall say unto them the God of your fathers has sent me unto you and they shall say to me what is his name what shall I say unto them and God said unto Moses I am that I am and he said thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel I am has sent me unto you uh, what a blessing uh, and he heard uh, what he needed to hear. Uh, he didn't hear uh, 
something that wouldn't sustain him. Huh? He heard something that confirmed in his heart what God had called and commissioned him to do. Huh? He heard something that gave him confidence. Huh? He said, I am. Huh? That I am is with me. Huh? Gave him some confidence. Huh? Then it gave him courage. Huh? He went down there and put his finger in Pharaoh's face uh, and said, God said, uh, let my people go. Uh, the I am sent me. Uh, and uh, he said, you've got his people too long. Uh, he got confidence. Uh, he got courage. Uh, then he got the consent. Uh, he got the green light. Uh, he had no more reservations. Uh, he's ready to go. And he went because uh, he got what he needed from God. Uh, but I'm not going to preach on any of that. I'm interested, verse number 15. Verse number 15. The Bible says, And God said moreover unto Moses, Thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, The Lord God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob hath sent me unto you. This is my name forever, and this is my memorial unto all generations. I'm going to preach on that thought right there. The Lord said, This is my name forever. I am that I am. And this is my memorial unto all generations. And I want to preach on the memorial of God. The memorial of God. On this Memorial Day weekend... I want to preach on the memorial of God. Can I say that it is a memorial that He is Lord? He said, I am that I am. Notice He didn't say I was and I will be. He said, I am that I am. There's never been a time when He hasn't been I am. It's the present tense. Can I say He's a present help in time of trouble? Can I say in his omnipresence, he always has been present. Uh, he's always in the present tense. Uh, can I say with God there is no time. A day is as a thousand years, uh, and a thousand years is a day. Uh, you see, uh, we're on this little sphere called earth. Uh, and we're, uh, 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 we are, uh, 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 I don't know what the word, we're directed uh, on this earth by the sun uh, and by the moon, uh, by a 24-hour day. Uh, uh, in this whole sphere of this 24-hour day, uh, we keep time. Uh, got to watch right there. You got to watch? Get one. Uh, uh, we keep time. Uh, because the Bible says, as it is appointed unto men once to die, uh, and after this the judgment. Uh, we've all got an appointment with Almighty God. Uh, uh, the saved are going to stand at the judgment seat of God, uh, uh, the judgment seat of Christ. Uh, uh, but those that are unsaved uh, will stand at the great white throne judgment, uh, and every man will give an account of himself to God. Uh, the saved will give an account of the deeds done in our body, uh, whether they were good or bad. Uh, the unsaved uh, will give an account of their sin uh, to God, and they'll be judged for their sin uh, and sentenced to pay for their sin uh, forever in the lake of fire. Uh, I'm glad I'm saved. Uh, my sins are paid for at Calvary, uh, never to be remembered against me again. Uh, they've been forgiven. Uh, forgotten uh, and done away with uh, by the blood of Jesus Christ. Uh, he's always in the present. Uh, if we stepped out of this sphere uh, and went to glory, we'd see it's just one eternal day. Uh, there is no night there. Uh, the Lamb, uh, He's the light of it all, uh, and His glory shines forevermore. Uh, and can I say, God is always in the present. God looks at our yesterdays and our tomorrows all the same. He just sees everything unfolded before Him. He is Lord. Can I say, uh, in being Lord, that means He's supreme. There is none else. He said there is no one beside Him. His throne is in the sides of the north. There is no other God. Uh, we live in a world full of religion. Uh, 
and there's all kinds of religions uh, and all kinds of gods and idols people worship. Uh, gods of stone, uh, gods of wood, uh, gods that hear not or speak not, uh, gods of ancestors, uh, gods made up in people's minds, uh, gods of crystals, uh, gods of statues. Uh, but there's only one true and living God. Uh, and his name is Jehovah. And can I say, he is Lord. Uh, he's not going to become Lord. Uh, he is Lord. Uh, always has been Lord. Uh, and he is supreme. Uh, there is no one like him, uh, nor anybody that can aspire to be who he is. Uh, he's Lord. He's supreme. There is none else. He is the self-sustained God. He doesn't need anybody else. God wasn't created. He's always been. God created man. God created everything that's been made. Uh, he is the self-sustaining God. Uh, I remember that story uh, where uh, God came to the scientists and the scientist said, uh, I can make man as good as you. Uh, and uh, 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 he said, go ahead and do it. Uh, and so God uh, 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 made man out of the dust of the earth. The scientist went to make man uh, and he started to reach for the dust and said, God said, whoa, 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 get your own dirt. God made the dirt. Then he made man from the dirt, from the dust of the earth. And God breathed into man the breath of life and man became a living soul. Even the very conscience of man knows there is a living God. Uh, that's why men everywhere worship something. Because deep down inside, there's a longing for a relationship with the Creator. And can I say, he's the self-sustained God. He, he doesn't need anybody. And he didn't need anybody to come and make him or tell him what to do. He's supreme. He's self-sustained. But can I say this? He is sovereign. Can I say God is working whether we know he's not working or not? For 400 years, the children of Israel had been down there afflicted by Pharaoh and the Egyptians. Uh, and for 400 years, they'd cried because of the evil of their taskmasters. Uh, and they'd long but lost hope that God would ever hear them. Uh, but Brother Ron, God was at work even when they didn't know he was at work. He's sovereign. Just like he set that bush on fire before Moses ever saw the bush. God knows how to work in people's lives. He knows how to orchestrate things to get people's attention. And he certainly uh, heard the cries uh, of his people uh, and he began working uh, and hey, he said to deliver at the right time. By the way, he not only delivered his people, he broke Egypt. He destroyed Pharaoh's army in the Red Sea. And when Israel left Egypt, they left with all the spoils of Egypt. They took everything worth anything out of Egypt. He broke Pharaoh and he broke Egypt. Uh, -uh. He's a sovereign God. Can I say the memorial of the Lord is he's the Lord. Can I say, not only is it a memorial that he is Lord, it's a memorial of his legacy. Look again in verse number 15. Look what he says. And God said moreover unto Moses, I mean, he'd said enough to Moses, but here he adds a little more. Moreover, he adds some more. God said moreover unto Moses, Thus shalt thou say to the children of Israel, The Lord God of your fathers the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, hath sent me unto you, and this is my name forever, I am that I am, and this is my memorial unto all generations. Can I say that it's a memorial of his legacy? He tells Moses to tell him, I'm the God of Abraham. I'm the God of Jacob. I'm the God of Isaac. I'm the God of your fathers. Uh, I am that I am. I'm your God. Uh, but I'm also going to be a God uh, to all generations. Uh, I'm glad it said to all generations. Uh, I'm glad it didn't say just to the generation to come uh, or the generations of the Jews, uh, but to all generations. Because uh, on down the road, uh, 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 the sovereign God we're talking about sent His Son uh, to die for our sin. Uh, and in Jesus Christ... Uh, 
Ah, he is the true vine of Israel. Ah, ah, listen, Israel was God's chosen people. Ah, but through Christ, ah, a branch was grafted in ah, where Gentiles could become ah, part of the family of God. Ah, and all generations ah, means it made it all the way down ah, to the Afton Baptist Church ah, on the third Saturday night of March 1974 ah, when I heard about Jesus ah, and I got born born again uh, and he changed my life uh, hey uh, I'll never forget my granddaddy said son you satisfied uh, uh, brother Jazz said yes sir I am uh, I had no idea 50 years later how still satisfied I'd be in Jesus uh, what a difference he made in my life uh, so how do you know you got saved well can I say I know because I was there when it happened he changed me uh, I didn't know he changed me, but he changed me. I just knew I didn't want to go to hell. And I heard how I could escape hell by believing on the Lord Jesus Christ. And I did. And he saved me. And here's one of the first evidences that somebody got saved because it happened to me. As soon as church was over, I couldn't wait to go tell somebody. And I couldn't wait to go tell my dad uh, I got saved tonight. Uh, when you get saved, uh, you're not ashamed of being saved. You want to tell everybody you know uh, something happened to me. I got saved. Hallelujah. Now, can I say people look at you weird, but you don't care because you just got saved. Can I say it is a memorial to his legacy? Can I say? The night I got saved, Brother Ron, what end of all generations? There have been a lot of people saved since I got saved. And there will be people saved uh, until God says that's it. Uh, and he sends his son uh, uh, to come. Uh, and you and I that are saved will come back with him. Uh, I'm not talking about the rapture. I'm talking about his great uh, his second coming will come with him. Uh, and he'll stop uh, uh, all of this. Uh, and then there'll be a thousand year reign. Uh, and God will still save even after that. But when it's all said and done, uh, God's going to create a new heaven, new earth, burn this earth up, uh, and burn up all wickedness with it. What a blessing. But until then, there's hope for people to get saved. Say, preacher, why do you still preach like you do? Why do you still go like you go? Because people need to get saved. It does my heart good hearing about that meeting down there in Cannon Mountain. Over 30 people have been saved. I think that's wonderful. And I hope it just keeps spreading. Uh, we see it's a memorial that he's Lord. It's a memorial of his legacy. Uh, Psalm 135, 13 says, Thy name, O Lord, endured forever, and thy memorial, O Lord, throughout all generations. It's a memorial of his love. Jeremiah 31, 3 says, The Lord hath appeared of old unto me, saying, Yea, I have loved thee with an everlasting love. Therefore, with loving kindness have I drawn thee. Why did God appear to Moses? Because he loved him. Why did God appear to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob? Because he loved them. Why did God appear to me? Because he loved me. Why does God care about you? I don't know, but he loves you. Uh, might have allowed you to be here today so you could hear that he loves you. Wants to save you, change your life. 1 John chapter 4, verse number 8 says, He that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. And this was manifested, the love of God toward us, because that God sent His only begotten Son into the world, that we might live through Him. Here in His love, not that we love God, but that He loved us and sent His Son to be the propitiation for our sin. Can I say God proved His love by sending His Son to die for our sins? Can I say religion says you've got to give your children to the religion? God gave His Son for us. God's not interested in religion. He's interested in a relationship that we can know Him as our Heavenly Father. We see the memorial that He's Lord. Memorial of His legacy. The memorial of His love. But also there's the, it's a memorial of His liberating. Look in verse 16. Look at verse 16. He says, Go 
And gather the elders of Israel together and say unto them, The Lord God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, and Isaac, of Jacob, has appeared to me, saying, I have surely visited you and seen that which is done to you in Egypt. And I have said, I will bring you up out of the affliction of Egypt unto the land of the Canaanites and the Hittites and the Amorites and the Perizzites and the Hivites and the Jebusites unto a land flowing with milk and honey. God says, I've seen the trouble you're in. I see the bondage you're in. I see how you're contained as a slave there. I've got good news. I've come to break the bondage. I'm going to deliver you out of the uh, uh, slave drug trade market of Egypt, and I'm going to deliver you to a land flowing with milk and honey. It's a memorial of his liberating. When God saved me, he didn't leave me like he found me. He broke the bands of sin and the bondage of sin and he set me free. Hallelujah. Uh, uh, the Bible said in John 8, 36, If the Son therefore shall make you free, uh, ye shall be free indeed. Uh, what a blessing to be free from my sin. Uh, free from the bondage of sin. Uh, free from the punishment of sin. Uh, freed, freed, freed. Uh, all because of the blood of Jesus Christ that was shed for me. Uh, I'm glad I'm saved and set free today. Uh, I'm not what I used to be. I'm not always what I ought to be. But thank God, one day I'm going to be like him because he set me free. Galatians 5, 1 says, Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ hath made us free, and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Once you've been set free, live like you're free. Don't go back to the vomit God delivered you from. Ah. Uh, I know some can go back there, but I don't understand some go back there and dwell there. Sometimes it makes me wonder maybe they hadn't ever been really delivered. Maybe they had a head knowledge, but not a heart knowledge. They knew what it took to be saved in their mind, but they never experienced it in their heart. God help them. And then I thought about this lastly. Talking about the memorial of God. This memorial of God shows that He is our legitimacy. Hmm? Can I say? I'm not standing here because I'm a Baptist preacher. I'm not standing here because I'm the pastor of Emmanuel Baptist Church and this is something I sought to do with my life. I'm standing here because of an encounter I had with Almighty God. And He's my legitimacy. Everything I am, everything I have, everything I aspire to be is all because of Him. Can I say in Him, I found He's an advocate. Huh? When the devil shows up and tries to blame me for whatever, I have an advocate, a mediator, seated at the right hand of the Father, stands up and says, Father! He's one of ours. He's engraved in the palm of my hand. Uh, he's been robed in my righteousness. Uh, he's justified uh, in our sight by faith. Uh, Father, uh, he's been sealed by the Holy Ghost. Uh, his name's written in the Lamb's book of life. Uh, Father, he's one of ours. Uh, and the Father looks at my advocate, his son, uh, and says, that's good enough for me. Uh, justified. Uh, devil, you're a liar and the father of it. Uh, leave my child alone. Uh, I'm glad he's my advocate. Uh, he's my legitimacy. Uh, I stand not on my own merit, uh, but I stand on the merit of Christ and what he's done in me. Uh, he's my advocate. Uh, he's my avenger. Uh, hey, uh, uh, the Lord says vengeance is mine. I will repay, saith the Lord. Uh, I'm glad he's the one that'll say of the score. Uh, he's the one taking notes. Uh, he's my advocate. Uh, he's my avenger. Uh, he's my authority today. Uh, I stand on the authority of Christ and his word. Uh, there is nothing else uh, to govern the soul of man. Uh, he is my authority today. Uh, hey, he's the anchor of my soul. Uh, hey, when troubles come and they'll come, we are that Wednesday night. Uh, I'm glad I've got an anchor within the veil. Uh, steadfast and sure uh, 
and he's the anchor of my soul. Uh, I'm tied to him by the rope of the Holy Ghost, uh, and I can only get so far. Uh, I go to go so far. Uh, I'm glad I got an anchor reeling me into glory. Uh, what a blessing. He's my legitimacy. Uh, he's my all in all. Uh, he's the one I'm trusted in. Uh, he's the one that saved me, uh, sealed me, uh, changed me. Uh, Promise me a home in heaven. Uh, he's my legitimacy today. I said, Preacher, what did you do to get saved? I did nothing. It had already been done. I just believed on the one who told me if I believed in him, he'd save me. I turned to him and he changed my life. And he is my legitimacy today. Romans 8 14 says. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. For you have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. And if children that heirs, heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ, if, be, if so be that we suffer with Him, that we may be also glorified together. 1 Corinthians 8, 6 says, But to us there is but one God, the Father, of whom are all things, uh, and we in Him, and one Lord Jesus Christ, by whom are all things, and we by Him. Uh, Romans 8, 31, uh, What shall we say to these things? Uh, if God be for us, who can be against us? He's my legitimacy today. I'm glad I know him. I'm glad I know a little bit about the memorial of God. I'm glad every Lord's Day we celebrate the memorial of God. Every day ought to be Memorial Day where we think about the goodness of God. And where would we have been had we not turned aside to see him and the great sight of what he could do in our lives. Can I say... On this Memorial Day weekend, please take time to remember the bravery and sacrifice of the fallen who gave their lives for us to have the freedoms, the liberties, and the privileges we have. Make sure you take another look at old glory and realize what she really represents. Don't look at Washington, D.C. Don't look at the, the Capitol. Look at what she really stands for, liberty and justice for all. And then while you're thinking about the fallen, oh, don't fail to recognize the sacrifice and lordship of the Father. Because without Him, it wouldn't matter where we lived. We'd have no hope. Our country was founded on Judeo-Christian principles. Our forefathers came here not for gold, but for God. They came to worship without being told how to worship. They came to believe in the God of the Bible. Many of them put their lives in peril, crossing the Atlantic in vessels that we wouldn't even board today. But they came seeking hope, and they found it in the Lord. And I say, you just go study the founding fathers. Every one of them will tell you America is a Christian nation. Every one of them will tell you that this nation was founded by God. That this nation bloomed as a rose in the wilderness because of the grace of God. They'll tell you that they loved and worshipped God. And can I say we have leaders today that even shudder to mention his name. And when they do, they don't know who they're talking about. But I'm glad that God of the Bible has a memorial to all generations. And even in this perverse, wicked generation we live in, there's still folks that are trusting in him. There's still churches that are preaching him. There's still some holding his banner high. Do not forget the memorial of the lordship and liberation and love of our Father, Jehovah God. I am that I am. I wonder, do you know him today? Maybe in our midst some that have never truly repented of their sins and believed on the Lord Jesus Christ. We're going to give you that opportunity. We're going to have an invitation. If you don't know the Lord, we're going to invite you to come. Say, preacher, I don't know how to be saved. We'll get somebody to take a Bible show you how to be saved. You can be saved today. 
Say, preacher, I'm saved. We're going to give you an opportunity to come and thank the Father that you're included in the memorial, that you're part of his legacy. You're one of his generations. Maybe you need to come and tell him thank you. Thank you for Calvary. Thank you for making a way that I could be saved, that my sins could be forgiven. Maybe you need to come and thank him. Maybe he spoke to you about something else this morning. We're going to give him an opportunity to talk to him. We're going to have a song of invitation. Brother Clint, you come, get a song. Say, Brother Daniel, come, pick out a song. I wonder today. No greater day to get saved than today because you don't know if you got tomorrow. The Bible says now is the accepted time. Today's the day of salvation. If you're not saved, why don't you come and give your heart and life to Jesus. Let's all stand there picking out a song. Let's have a word of prayer. Father, thank you for the scriptures. Thank you for the memorial of God. Help our minds to always reflect upon what you gave that we might have life. Now, Father, I pray in a crowd this size for everyone in attendance. Lord, if there be any that aren't saved, I pray for the sweet Holy Ghost of God right now to touch their heart. Help them to realize they're not saved, but help them to turn. As Moses turned aside to look at the bush, help them to turn and look at the Lord and come and give their heart and life to Jesus. Maybe there's folks that are saved, but Lord... They're living beneath their privilege. Maybe they need to come and get right with the Lord. Maybe some just need to come. It's been a while since they really just thanked you for what you've done for them. Maybe some need to come and tell, them they, tell you that they love you. I don't know. You know the need of every heart. So we just ask you to speak to hearts and have your way in this invitation. We'll thank you for it. For it's in Jesus' wonderful name we do pray. Amen. Thanks to listeners like you, IBC has had over 100,000 views on our YouTube channel. If you haven't already, subscribe today. And as always, thanks for listening.